So here's the circuit for the flash. So in order for you to understand how this works, you need a little bit of, of electronics background. But I'm going to do my best to try and explain uh, at least uh, intuitively how the circuit works. So here's the single transistor I was telling you about. Here the three, the three resistors are one is here, one is here, and the other one is right there. I told you that there is a big electrolytic capacitor, that's this one. I said there is a non-electrolytic aluminum foil one, that's this one right here. I said there, is a, there are two transformers. Here's the first transformer, here's the second transformer. Here's the neon flash tube, that's the thing that flashes. Here's, a, I'm sorry, not the neon, just the regular flash. Here's a neon, little neon bulb. In, this, in the one that I just showed you, this was an LED, but it doesn't really matter. The, the concept's the same. So they, sometimes they use a neon one here. Here's the trigger button uh, switch that when you close the flash fires. Here's the on and off switch. And uh, let's go through the circuit. So at the beginning, the on and off switch is open. So let's forget about everything that's on this side of the circuit. If this switch is open and um, there is therefore no current going through the base, there's no voltage on the base. So this transistor, this bipolar transistor is turned off. So there is no current going down. As soon as you close the circuit, you can follow this connection. It goes through somewhere in the middle of the transformer and it's connected to all the way to all the way up to 1.5 volt. So you will bring some current and some voltage close to 1.5 volt at the base of this transistor, which will quickly turn this transistor on, causing a lot of current to go down from the collector to the emitter. Now, as soon as you induce a current to go through this uh, half of the transformer, this itself will cause a current to be induced on the other half of the transformer. But as soon as you do that, the current in here would then lower the voltage of the base to go down to even below zero. So then the, transform the transistor turns off again. But when the transistor turns off, this voltage will then re eventually go back all the way up to 1.5 volts because the current will stop and then the transistor will turn on again. So this transistor turns itself on and off through this feedback path in the transformer. So you could say that this portion of the circuit is essentially nothing more than an oscillator. So by turning the transistor on and off quickly, you can induce a current in the transformer. Now this center tap brings back a small voltage, means that the entire voltage across the transformer does not appear at the base of this transistor. If it did, the transistor would, would die. So they've taken only a part of that voltage down to the base of the transformer but the whole transformer has a huge turn ratio. By that I mean, if you look at this circuit again, you can only see the outer coil, the outer coil of this transformer, and I can count, and it has about six or seven turns only. That coil on the outside that you can see, that's this one. So on the inside, below that yellow tape, is a whole bunch of other turns of this transformer, maybe about a thousand or a hundred times more than what is on the outside. So that will cause a huge voltage difference between the primary coil and the secondary coil of the transformer. And that's how you are able to generate such a high voltage using only a 1.5 volt supply. So they take the high voltage portion of the output of the transformer and they connect it to this diode. They do that for a very specific reason. It's because the signal that appears here is AC. It's AC, why? Because it's an oscillator because it turns on and off constantly. That AC voltage will go below zero by several hundred volts every time on its down cycle. And this diode will only conduct current when the voltage on this side is lower than the voltage on this side. So every time this voltage goes well below zero, this big capacitor, which is the main capacitor of the flash, gets charged a little bit more. So every time during every um, uh, oscillation cycle, you will put a little bit more charge into this big uh, capacitor. So the voltage at the output of the capacitor is a DC voltage, but the voltage on the other side of the diode is an AC voltage. So you essentially have built a what's called a peak detector, where you keep dumping more and more and more voltage or charge into this capacitor, and the capacitor begins to charge up and we will take a look at it on the oscilloscope so we can see the oscillation uh, very clearly. So this guy will then eventually charge up to um, minus 350 volts. And the reason I say minus 350 volts is because I'm measuring everything with respect to the ground of the battery. So if you assume that this is a zero volt, every time this thing spikes well below zero, the diode conducts, 
and the positive terminal of the capacitor is actually connected to ground. So this node can go all the way down to minus 350 volts. And the other side of this now, there's a whole bunch of other circuits that is responsible for actually triggering the flash. So there's a big resistor that separates this half of the circuit from this half of the circuit. So this is a big capacitor here that's charged up, and that capacitor is connected on one side to the flash tube. The other side of the flash tube is grounded. And on this side here, we have the neon light or the LED and a big resistor in series. So if this voltage gets high enough, meaning when the flash is ready to be fired, the, the light turns on. It's just an indicator to let you as the user know that the flash will fire once you push the shutter button. So this, this portion of the circuit is only an in indicator. Then we have another capacitor here, much smaller than this one, that will charge to about the same voltage as this capacitor. So as time passes and the flash is charged up, slowly current will flow through here and charge up this capacitor to the same voltage as this one. This is a much smaller capacitor. And here's the trigger switch on the other side and another transformer. So the way the flash tube works is that even though we are putting zero volts here and minus 350 volts here, that's not enough to initiate a flash because the potential is not big enough for a spark to form inside the flash tube. So you need to kind of kick it, you need to initiate it, um, it uh, to, for the current to start flowing and once the current starts to flow then the path, the short circuit happens in the middle of the flash and then you get the flash which is a spark. So in order to kick it and initiate the current you need to put a very very large voltage, in this case a very large negative voltage right here to draw the electrons into the tube. And once you draw the electrons into the tube, then you will fire the flash. And this is done through this uh, transformer and this capacitor. So if I close this circuit quickly, which is done by connecting these two uh, wires together very briefly, it will discharge this capacitor through this inductor half of the transformer and to ground. So there will be a burst of current a lot of it, but for a very short time, right through this transformer, which will then cause even a bigger, because this transformer has a big turn ratio, a bigger voltage on the other side. So for a very brief, brief time, something close to minus 2,000 volts appears here for a very short time, and that initiates the flash, causes the electrons to be drawn into the tube and all the way to the other side and to ground, and then you get the big bright light that you see. So this entire circuit is everything that's on this. I haven't omitted anything uh, that is on this um, circuit that you just saw. So by looking at this, we should be able to make some predictions. Well, we should be able to put our oscilloscope at this node and uh, look at the waveform that I told you. Uh, we should be able to measure a very large negative voltage at this node. And of course, we should be able to see this light turn on. And uh, we will do all of those things right now, and we'll also take a look at how you would uh, measure something like that. And then at the very end, we'll see how we can use this uh, in combination with the Nixie tube and do some experiments there. So in order to make the experiments safer, I've taken one of these flash units and I've removed the components that I don't need to and I've soldered some wires to it so it can be easily connected to a power supply and then we can measure currents and voltages and so on. So for example, these battery holders I don't need. I'm not going to be using the flash uh, itself anymore because I want to use it with a, for a Nixie tube so I can remove that and solder some wires to it so then I ended up with something that looks like this. So exactly the same circuit, everything is the same. I've removed the flash, the capacitors there. And you can see this one actually uses a, uh, I don't know if this thing can will focus. Uh, this thing uses a little neon tube as opposed to an LED to tell you when the flash is charged. So a little bit different, but it's the same circuit. And I've also uh, connected a piece of metal, soldered a piece of metal across the on and off terminal to permanently keep it in the on position. So this is uh, this would make it a little bit easier for me to do some uh, experiments with it. I've also removed the little trigger and, and put a, a jumper there in its place. And by this wire that I've soldered to it, this wire is just uh, across the plus and minus terminal of the flash. I can connect this to my power supply and then we can uh, check to see what is the voltage on the capacitor, how long does it take to charge up, and then we will do one discharge cycle by short circuiting the capacitor, which is not recommended. It's just for entertainment. And also, then we will show you uh, the waveform on the oscilloscope, and then we'll get to the Nixie tube. So let's see what I can do. So I'm going to take 
the positive and negative terminals, I'm going to connect them to my power supply. So here's the positive, here's the negative terminal. So I'll put that down. I will take the positive and the negative terminal of the multimeter. I'm going to connect it across the capacitor. So I'm going to connect the negative to where the ground of this power supply would be. That's the positive terminal of the capacitor. And I will take the other one and connect it to the negative terminal of the capacitor. So what I'm doing here is that I'm using my power supply to power the flash. I am measuring the voltage across the capacitor directly. You will be able to move this out of the way. You will be able to see at the same time the um, voltage that I'm applying to the flash unit. You will be able to see the current that the flash unit takes. It will show up right here and you will be able to see the voltage across the capacitor. So right now the voltage across the capacitor is minus 5.2 volts approximately. It's the residue from the last time that I charged it. So let's do that. I'm going to turn the power supply on. So right now it says zero volts at zero amps, so that makes sense. I'm going to slowly raise this voltage all the way up to 1.5 volts. And since I've already soldered the on and off button shut, it will start charging right away. So at the very beginning, up to about 0.5 volts, you will get nothing because the bipolar transistor hasn't turned on yet. So as soon as you go about 0.6 volts, right there, now the flash is starting to charge up the capacitor. And you can see the voltage here is already at minus 115 volts and it keeps rising slowly. Now I'm minus 123 volts, but this is only at 0.6 volts. An alkaline battery, a AA battery, can go all the way up to 1.5. So let's do that. 1.5 volts. Now we will wait a little bit until this thing charges. You can see it draws a lot of current. At the beginning it was drawing almost an amp. So Right now the current keeps going down, so that makes sense of course, because the current keeps going down because the capacitor keeps charging, so there's just loading on it. And at the same time you can see the voltage up here, now it's at 324 minus 326, 7 volts. And if I turn this, and I have to be very, very careful handling this now, very, very careful. So if I shift it over, you can see that little light flashing. That's the little neon light I was telling you about. Let me bring it a bit closer to the camera. Hopefully it will focus on it. Come on. Well, you can see the neon flash going on and off. And there is actually a little quiz in this um, episode that I'd like to see you guys try and discuss it on uh, the, uh, the forum or on the comment sections of the YouTube channel. The question I have for you is can you tell me why does this light flash? And I can tell you that in the LED version, if I were to replace this with an LED, the LED will not flash. So let me know why you think this is flashing. So let's put this down. So now I have charged the capacitor to minus 350 volts and there's still some about 296 milliamps of current going through it. Uh, if you leave this for a while longer, it's not going to go much uh, more than that. It's going to go about minus 358 volts and it's probably going to hover around that point. So now that capacitor is fully charged, so what I'm going to do as I'm going to turn the power supply off so there's no more current going in it and you can see this voltage will start to slowly fall for many reasons that the flashing light is of course is consuming some power there's leakage through the capacitor and so on so that voltage will continue to go down so let me get something to discharge it